Today we're talking about diff covers, or more specifically, aftermarket diff covers. The main objective is to see how much cooling these provide over a stock setup. I haven't been able to find real world numbers anywhere on the internet. Even from big brands, they use vague terms, like cools five times better, cools 118% better, or keeps your differential remarkably cooler. What does that even mean? Even here on YouTube, I wasn't able to find a video comparing real world numbers of a stock versus aftermarket setup. To help answer this question, Speedlab was kind enough to reach out and offer to send me one of their billet aluminum covers for testing. So let's check it out. I wasn't too sure what to expect from this cover, but I must say I was impressed with the build quality from Speedlab. This is actual CNC machined billet aluminum. Here you can see the grooves which supposedly help direct the flow, increasing cooling and lubrication. Overall this is a high quality piece of hardware and looks great aesthetically as well. We'll see if it performs as good as it looks in the upcoming test. Not only does it look great, it also has features to back it up. It has a fill plug at the top, it has a drain plug at the bottom, it has your little sight glass for your level indicator, and it even has a small plug here in case you overfilled and want to let out just a small amount of fluid. The sock cover has none of those things. As I mentioned earlier, our goal today is to do a real world temperature test between the stock differential cover and the Speedlab billet aluminum cover. To keep things as controlled as possible, I chose to do this test back to back on days that had the same weather conditions and around the same time of day on both days. I will also be tracking the exact same route on both days. The first part of the route consists of nine miles on the highway with a 60 mile per hour speed limit. Then an 8.7 mile loop on the interstate where I'll keep the speed above 75. Here I have my 16 foot dump trailer loaded down with some scrap. I also put a few extra logs in there for extra weight. This should help put a load in the truck and ensure we get a good temperature reading. All right, let's get this show on the road. Eight minutes to the interstate. I'll see you there. All right, here we go. Going on to the interstate. Keeping it between 75 and 80. there I'm gonna stop and check the temperature. Alright. Currently 90 degrees ambient. Sitting at about 147, 145 on the top side. 150-ish on the low side. Wow this lip is pretty steep. I should have thought this through more. What I forgot to explain initially is I'm actually doing two different tests. One with a trailer, which you just saw, and a second test without a trailer, which you're about to see right now. For the empty trip, I chose a smaller highway with a distance of 12 miles and a speed limit of 65 miles per hour. Once again, I'll be checking temps immediately upon arrival. All right, we made it. Let's check our temperature. Our ambient air temperature is 84 degrees. I'm going to check this just below. Looks like we're sitting at about 119. Check one a little lower. 123, 124-ish. Front sitting about 125. First things first, we'll get the plate off. There's a small sump here that holds a little bit of oil. I would recommend draining that out. I'm gonna be using my handy vacuum canister for that today. Once you have those cleaned out, double check them to make sure there's no metal pieces or metal shavings in there. Mine are fairly clean because I did this service about two years ago. For anyone concerned about magnets, the drain plug has one on it. And I might add that it is quite strong. 
The Speed Lab cover is notably heavy compared to the stock cover, weighing in at nearly 15 pounds, while the stock cover weighs 3.4 pounds. So everybody kind of has their preferred way of doing this, but my favorite way is just to stuff some rags, clean shop rags in here, before you clean off this surface, just because it helps keep any dirt out that might fall in here. This is probably overkill, but I've always preferred to do it this way. Now you can use a razor blade to clear off the old RTV, but I prefer to use a die grinder with a little scrubby wheel. Works great. Now for this part, take just a little bit of brake clean and then go all the way around the edge. Clean it up from any oil or any small pieces of silicone you might have missed. The same goes for the new cover. Make sure to clean it off so that the mating surface is clean and free of oil. I ordered a lube locker gasket, which is what I recommend, but it didn't get here in time, so I had to go with RTB. Feel free to roast my bead application in the comments. When installing a new cover, make sure to leave the bolts loose until they are all threaded. Then you can get them hand tight. If you're using RTV, leave them snug and torque them to spec after one hour of setup time. If you have a lube locker or similar gasket, you can torque immediately. All right, now we wait. One hour later. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow when we fill this thing up. Time to fill up our new cover. For anyone wondering, there is an O-ring that goes around the plugs, and this also has a magnet in the end as well. All right, so we got the Speed Lab diff cover hooked up. And as you can see, the load is identical to yesterday. Let's go testing. All right, so for the first part of the trip here, and I'm maintaining 60 miles an hour. Day two with the Speed Lab diff cover. Getting back on the interstate. Once again, I'm right between 70 and 80. Have cruise control set. We'll finish the loop out and see where we end up at. Same exit as yesterday. We'll park in the same spot and check our temperature. You can't see it on camera, but there's a really big bump here. I'm gonna turn the truck off today so you guys can hear me better. All right, our ambient temperature is 88 degrees, so about two degrees off from yesterday. 150 at the top. 150 at the bottom. All right, checking the front. About 150. Just a quick disclaimer on this time-lapse footage. If it looks familiar, that's because it's the same clip as earlier. The file got corrupted, so I had to reuse this one. All right, day two with the Speed Lab. Let's go check our temps. All right, day two, ambient temperature is 84 degrees. 137 near the top. About the same for the bottom. Front of our diff. About 139. That's a lot of numbers, huh? Let's go see what they mean. So, during the loaded trailer test, the stock cover saw temperatures of 147 at the top, 150 at the bottom, and 157 at the front, respectively. The Speed Lab cover saw temperatures of 150 degrees at the top, bottom, and front, which suggests it has a much more even heat distribution compared to the stock cover. During the empty test, the stock cover saw temperatures of 119 at the top, 124 at the bottom, and 125 at the front. 
while the speed lab saw 137 at the top, 137 at the bottom, and 139 at the front. So based off these numbers, it would seem like the speed lab performs better under load compared to the stock cover. I should also note that aluminum has much better thermal conductivity compared to steel, so on paper the speed lab should be better. But I'm not an expert in thermal dynamics, so if someone out there is, I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments. If you're interested in the cover or any other product from Speed Lab, check out the link in the description and use code SHADE15 for a discount at checkout. And if you like this series of real world tests, let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Thanks for watching.